This video is brought to you by the Corsair Vengeance K70 and K95. These fully mechanical keyboards are designed for performance gaming. Visit Corsair.com slash Vengeance Gaming to learn more. Now, naturally, many enthusiasts loved the Corsair 800D because of its over-the-top greatness, and the 900D is kind of that plus some. However, I was always a little bit more interested in the 650D because it took some of the over-the-topness and replaced it with some practicality that uh, I found kind of refreshing. The 650D was enough to fit everything that you needed without just being a little bit on the ridiculous side. This, my friends, is the 750D. Having not received a reviewer's guide, I'm opening it with Sting, by the way. I was saving Sting. Sting unboxings to start with something very special. So the 750D is, what it looks like is without being completely ludicrous, everything that most enthusiasts could possibly want, including, unlike the 650D, very strong radiator support, as well as compatibility with even XLATX motherboards, which have somewhat gone out of vogue. That was sort of a thing for a bit there, and I'm kind of glad that it went away because standard ATX motherboards are just fine, unless you're gonna make an XLATX motherboard that actually has nine PCI slots on it, for example, which nobody ever did for some reason. So it uses hard foam, actually not the most robust foam I've ever encountered. Um, so I don't know how strongly I would be able to recommend shipping your system across the country once it's fully built, especially if you go crazy and add all 10 hard drives that you can to this system um, and a bunch of liquid cooling and stuff because I don't know how, how well that foam would hold up. With that said, I guess we'll find out if it arrived here in one piece because this was shipped from Corsair all the way to me up here in Canada. So if it arrived, then at least it tells us that it's probably adequate for shipping the case by itself. The 750D eschews some of Corsair's other cases uh, sort of stylistic direction of having plastic accents or protrusions or whatever else and goes much like the 650D for a very clean aesthetic overall. So you can see the side panel here is just plain steel with a nice large window. We've seen this before on the 350D, the extremely, uh, the extremely large window with a slightly smoked look to it. On the front panel, we find a, what's become a staple of the very high-end Corsair cases, this brushed aluminum finish. And like the 900D, they've gone with a wider stance to this case and a wider than five and a quarter inch, five and a quarter inch bay. So what many enthusiasts are doing these days is they're not even bothering with optical drives. So what Corsair's done is they've gone, well, okay, we're not gonna compromise the aesthetic of the case uh, by having a five and a quarter inch bay that goes from here to here because probably most people won't even use them. But if people really wanna have a five and a quarter inch bay, this pops off and I'll show you what it looks like once we open it up. The front here is capable of holding up to a 280 or 240 millimeter radiator. You can see there's a removable fan filter and two of their AF140L fans. So these are airflow optimized. They're not quite like the retail airflow series. They don't have the rubber grommets in the corners, the replaceable rings and the aesthetics are a little bit uglier, but they're definitely functional fans. I personally prefer their pressure series fans, but it's hard to go wrong with either of them. So you can see here the additional mounting holes if you wanted to have a different fan configuration or whatever else the case may be. I always love saying that. Whatever the case may be, ha ha, I'm unboxing a case. All right, let's go ahead and put this back on. So it just sits there like, how does this go on? Oh, I see it. I put this in wrong. So the fan filter goes on the inside there and then this guy sits, so you guys can have a look at that, sits in those two little pieces right there and then clips on up here. Oh, I hate touching these just because you're gonna stain the aluminum, so beautiful. All right, front IO, you've got your headphone jack, microphone jack, reset button, love that, nice and recessed. You're not gonna be able to accidentally press that. Uh, your indicator LEDs as well as your power button, two USB 3 super speed ports, two USB 2.0 ports, and that is pretty much it. Let's move around to the back of the case. Oh boy, where we find, ah yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine 
PCI expansion slots. This is mostly useful if you're installing something like a dual slot graphics card in the very bottom PCI Express 16X slot of a motherboard. So even though there's actually no corresponding slot on the board here, you're going to want your rear exhaust or your rear ports to come through at the back. You've got a 120 or 140 millimeter mount at the back. There's a 140 millimeter fan mounted there by default. They do have extra room up here on the top so you shouldn't have too much trouble installing a radiator there and just more random vents also in the back so i think it's time to open this bad boy up i am expecting to find lots of room for cable management due to the wider than normal stance of this case and i am not disappointed side panel has what i'd consider to be a pretty typical amount of flex uh, the thing about Corsair's cases is they're not necessarily overbuilt when it comes to things like, you know, yes, we're going to use, you know, 1.2 millimeter thick metal on everything. It's not really like that. It's more to do with the engineering of them. Once they're put together, they're extremely solid and it's about the features that you get and the convenience. So little things like having over an inch of cable management space back here for large cables like your 24 pin, although if you go for something like an RM series power supply, you might not even have to deal with that because it's got a flat 24 pin cable. Uh, you've got lots of cable management hooks. These I love to see. Corsair and NZXT are the guys that I'd really consider to be leading the charge when it comes to cable management hooks on the back of a motherboard tray. Guys, they cost nothing and manufacturers that implement them are just plain being considerate of their customers because it makes it easier to get everything laid down flat so you can get that back side panel back on there. Very, very nice to see. And this is cool. So I haven't got a reviewer's guide for this case, so I'm just kind of winging it here. But check this out. They've got built-in SSD mounts all down the back of the case here. So this is an evolution of, I guess, mounting SSDs on the back of your motherboard tray. The top of the case actually has a very unique sort of implementation of a front or of a top fan grill. And that's this, check it out. Nice little flexible magnet around the outside so you can take it off if you prefer the aesthetic of the open grill or if you're not using it as an intake and you don't want fan filters or whatever else, you can swap around your rubber grommets according to whichever holes you prefer to use and uh, you can put it right back on, just like that. Love it. Very nice. So it looks like you could install it whichever way you wanted. So I'm, I'm gonna go with this way so I can see it through my front panel. So all you gotta do is chuck that in there, clicks into place, and when you eject it, it actually pops itself out with a little tension spring mounted thing here at the front. So you can take these out if you don't want them. You can just remove them with presumably a screw or a plastic, yeah, there they go. They come right off just like that. And uh, that's pretty darn cool, great feature. All right, so I think that pretty much does it for the back here. You can see they've done a lot of folding and bending in order to reinforce the motherboard tray. So in spite of the very large cutout, it actually is pretty darn solid. So kudos to Corsair for coming up with that particular idea. And let's, uh, oh yeah, there's a little bit of toollessness to the five and a quarter inch bays, but of course you can install screws as well. In the front, we see the support for the aforementioned 240 millimeter or 280 millimeter radiator. We can also see that if we were to remove both of these two three by three and a half inch or two and a half inch drive sleds, we would be able to install another 240 millimeter radiator right there in the bottom. We also find the accessories, which I keep forgetting to talk about when I do these case unboxings because they're just so boring. Zip ties. Screws, okay, all the screws you need to build your system in this case. Also on the front, we find lots of cable management rooms. So I like to see this, more cable management holes next to the power supply, and then other cable management holes in other places. So here's for your graphics cards, your 24 pin, your whatever pin, all the pins that come through are the ones up here. Lots of room to manage your cables. And since I covered most of what's interesting about the case when we were on the other side, let's stick with, ah yes, more information about radiators. And I think I might've been wrong about that front one. Oh yeah, 280 or two. Okay, at the top you can do 360 mil or 280 mil. So you can actually put a triple 120 millimeter radiator in here natively or a single 280 mil right over here and it looks like you wouldn't have to sacrifice your five and a quarter inch bay if you were to go that option. That's actually a very compelling option. So you could actually do 280, 280, maybe 240 depending on the clearance between the front one and the bottom one and throw four SSDs in here, no problem. Truly enthusiast grade when it comes to the supported hardware without that ridiculous size and weight that comes along with 
an 800D or a 900D. I could actually move this thing with a system installed in it. When we did our overkill buyer's guide in the 900D, I couldn't move the system on my own once we were done with it. So uh, you've got a filter that's removable for the power supply intake. So that's pretty straightforward. Actually one of the better built uh, filter removal mechanisms that I've ever seen. So it actually has like a slot that it goes into instead of relying on being able to line it up with weird little like, you know, uh, bits of metal or whatever else. So thank you for checking out my unboxing and overview of the Corsair Obsidian 750D. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. Like this video if you like this video. Like this video if you liked the product. And like this video if you've ever known someone with the name Samuel. <laughs> <laughs>